in the advance of climate drawing. Watching students prepare for life in the art world is always fascinating, especially when there's such a diversity in the group. Drawing has always been highly, relaxed, highly rated with individual arts. From the Renaissance to the end of the 19th century, drawing was regarded as a fairly conservative medium, rarely the subject of innovation. It was seen as a first step to support other areas of art practice, such as painting, sculpture, and architecture. And of course, it still is for that purpose today. During the Renaissance, uh, drawing was especially suitable for describing the new disciplines of anatomy, perspective, and geometry. The 17th century saw the emergence of the collector. Carefully stored, the drawings were available for viewing and treasured for their own sake establishing it as a major discipline in its own right. Drawing has now occupied a new position, no longer tied to documenting images of the real world. An alternative tradition of abstraction firmly established itself in the, in the 20th century. From the 1950s to the present, there has been an enormous explosion, graphic explosion, unlike any other period in art history. The characteristic of drawing today is born of a search for new territory, breaking old boundaries. The traditional boundaries that exist between art and design, for example, have been eroded. Today, drawing is an essential tool in the computer world, history, psychology, education, and of course, fine art. So what does constitute drawing now? The well-worn, is it a noun or a verb, debate, is long argued, but doesn't really mean that much. Today, drawing is so broad and slippery, it's hard to nail down. I find the most exciting work lies at the interface between drawing and other areas of art practice. This exhibition showcases just what is now possible in drawing, where some of the more challenging works are pulled between <coughs> extremes of sketchy, finished, spontaneous and measured. The conventions of the primitive stick of charcoal gleaned from the prime of fire to offerings from a modern pantry, including lentils and all kinds of flour, have been used to express ideas about the world we live in. Shane's drawings explore the rhythm and patterns of the natural world. Images are skillfully rendered with the most ancient, seductive, blissful, and blissful pity of all the stick of charcoal. Um, her four pen drawings down there. Yeah. Her, four, her, um, her four small ink drawings made me think of English artists like J.D. Harding and Gainsborough. Um, whose landscapes float in the centre of the paper, um, enclosing their central worlds and begin and end at the edge of the ink. Sue Hilda obsessively, this is Sue's work over there, Sue um, obsessively pursued a process that she developed using the human figure at its core. The ink drawings could easily be etchings as the figures sit on a ground of randomly placed shapes embossed into paper. Sue's ink drawings of restlessly shifting figures vibrate in a nervous state of nervous tension. It is difficult to know whether this was contrived or the result of an unconscious process of rapid gesture drawing, or rapid or gesture drawing. Um, and I found a delicious little quote by Delacroix. Um, I have to throw this in because he's talking about um, rapid drawing or gesture drawing as we know it today. And he says that if you don't have the knack of making a sketch of a man who has thrown himself out of a window whilst he's falling from the fourth story to the ground, you never will be able to sketch the big stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one wonders how big it's got to get. <laughs> um, Sheila has pursued her own vision based on memories of her native New Zealand rendered in watercolour pencils. There is a haze in those drawings that immediately reference a kind of spiritual journey that becomes embedded in the very nature of the landscape itself. Sheila's second series sees her as an astute observer of the everyday, a social documenter uh, with her series, the uh, harness racing, racing um, work. Gina's personal journey this year has been a pleasure to watch. She has asked her paper to soak up large amounts of ink in pursuit of imagery that pulls and pushes between representation and abstraction. Her final series, Small Vessel Works, are a triumph. They share the belief that the smallest hand gesture can be loaded with profound significance and meaning. They are reminiscent of Claude Lorraine's drawings, 
um, in their economy of line and mark. I don't, it's, I'll get it to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Sky um, exploited, sorry, um, just, yeah, exploited a set of uh, personal images gleaned from the world of craft. This is a daring game to play, especially in view of the domestic scale she's chosen to work with. She's made a cheap, cheeky homage to the old adages and vinyl wallpaper. These works throw out artistic challenges as they hover nervously between art and craft. Sky's use of text places the works within the genre begun by Cubism in Dada and conceptual art. The fusion of art and text in contemporary practice is multifaceted. We can enjoy the humour as we laugh in recognition. <laughs> Alex. Alex, Marie. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry. Absorption and introspection um, drive the drawings of Alex. Her skill in rendering her wildlife drawings is unquestioned and goes beyond mere illustrations. As Maisie Turner suggested, these works have echoes of political imagery and endangered species. A particularly uneasy drawing for me is the one of her pet snake called Jeffrey, um, who, who is much loved. I think her brother. Cuddle it, uh, a polar bear or something. <laughs> Snakes in the visual arts have long been associated with all manner of rituals known to mankind since Adam and Eve. Maybe there's a, an exciting series lurking in the snake school somewhere. Right. <laughs> Sophie began the year cautiously as she ser searched for her own voice in a crowd of many. Her drawings evolved and matured, and at the end of that process, She's given us a gift of fresh and original drawings. There is a quirkiness and humour in the work that comes up subconsciously from the inner world. Sophie has an innate sense of the language of drawing that has evolved from both historical and contemporary practice. There is an eerie and dislocated air about these drawings that I find exciting. It's as though Sophie's using drawing to test her ideas. Renee. Renee's work would sit just